What's going on, brother? Over the next few minutes, I'm going to spend some time going over all of the advice that I wish I had gotten from my father. Men feel lost. There's no other way of putting it. We're told that our job is to work. We grow up, we get an education or a skill, get a job, start a family, have kids, provide for that family, put ourselves last, and live for our entire existence in this monotonous cycle of give, 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 work, 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 sleep, 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 give, 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 work, 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 sleep, 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 sleep. We drive ourselves into oblivion, thinking that that's what good men do. Brother, you are not meant to be a slave, period. I wish my father had taught me that my life is about much more. I'm capable of much more than just sticking with the status quo giving her what she wants, obeying, paying my taxes, and being compliant to the rule set that everybody else follows. I wish that my father had that knowledge that he could have passed to me. But the unfortunate part was just like I was raised by a woman, so was he, and so was his father. And I'm four generations removed from what it truly feels like to be raised as a young boy by a man. And so now, I'm 36 years old, I have two sons, and I'm not only trying to figure out what that looks like myself, but also trying to teach those little boys what that looks like. And so far, I've come to a few conclusions that I've found have had the most profound impact on improving the quality of my life, improving the quality of my relationships, and making me an overall better, more valuable man. And I'd like to share those things with you. Again, most men have things backwards. You think in your mind that your world, your life, your purpose is to attract women, appease women, appeal to women, get yourself a good wife from a good family, have children, provide for that family, give her what she wants, happy wife, happy life, be vulnerable to that woman, be emotionally available to her. And then you wonder why most divorces end with the woman leaving the man. And then you wonder why men have the highest suicide rate and why men struggle with depression, anxiety, lack of purpose, fulfillment. Right now, it's more difficult than it's ever been to be a man. And there's two reasons for that. The first is because most of us didn't grow up with an example of what that actually means. And then the second is, despite the fact that we didn't get that example, we're still expected to fulfill the role. And then a third is when we do, half of society tells us we're wrong for doing that. And so again, the purpose of this video is for me to provide you with the advice that I wish my father gave me. The hard lessons that I had to learn on my own after repeating over and over and over the same mistakes and failures, setting me back decades in my life, paying the price. And the very first piece of advice that I wish my father would have given me is you don't need a woman. Well, what do you mean, Josh? What do you have against women? Nothing. I do not have anything against women. Understand, brother, there's no shortage of women. What there is is a shortage of high quality, virtuous women who are looking for the type of man who you want to be. And I promise you, that woman is not looking for a boy who doesn't have his life together. Ignore them. A woman is the last on this list. Stop spending your time focusing on being something that you're not so that you can attract someone who's going to distract you from becoming the best version of yourself. You want a good woman. You first need to become the type of man that deserves a good woman. Focus on creating purpose in your life first. And that goes into my second piece of advice that I wish my father had given me, which is find a purpose. Now, a lot of people ask me when I talk about purpose, what is that? How do I find it? Your purpose is something that you are deeply passionate about that you're pursuing that offers you fulfillment while giving you an ability to create an impact in the world that's greater than yourself, whatever that is. 
And so when people ask me what purpose is, I always refer back to the concept described by the Japanese called Ikigai. And Ikigai translates in English to a reason for being. That is your purpose. Your reason for being here. Find your purpose. And it's not going to be easy because you're going to go through this world and you're going to face distractions. You're going to face obstacles and hardships and uncertainty and self-doubt and a plethora of emotions that are going to deter you from really stepping into your power as a man and pursuing your purpose. That's normal. You have to learn to overcome those things as part of your journey. But understand your purpose is a fluid, dynamic thing that changes with who you become and who you are over time. And it consists of four elements. The first element is something that you love. It's very simple. You should find something that you enjoy doing that you can wake up in the morning and think about and look forward to it. The second element of Ikigai or your purpose is what the world needs. Not only do I need to love this thing that I'm doing, but I also need to be doing something that serves people, something that the world needs. Men, we are servants. And the one way to create fulfillment and purpose in our lives is to serve, to help, to create impact. The third element of Ikigai or creating your purpose is something you're good at. This kind of aligns with something that you love. Typically, you enjoy doing things that you're talented in. You should find something that you have a propensity to be successful with. If you have a natural knack for art or mechanics or building or carpentry, you enjoy doing it. You are halfway towards creating your purpose. And the final element of it guy is something that you can be paid for. Why? Because it's something that you're going to use to provide for your family one day. You have to enjoy what you do. You have to be good at what you do. And it has to be something that the world needs. These four things overlap. And then when I can make money doing it, now this is something that fulfills me. I feel like I have a sense of purpose in my life because I'm serving the world I'm able to create a living doing it, and it's something I'm good at that I enjoy. Now, it's important for you to understand that for most people, in order to become a master at a craft, it takes a minimum of a decade. 10,000 hours is how much time you need to spend committed to the thing that you want to pursue with your life in order for you to really know if that's what you're called for. So as a young man... It's okay to go out and try new things, make mistakes, pursue avenues that you may not have thought were a good pathway for you. Explore, find yourself, stop allowing life to lead you, and instead you lead your life. And what I've personally found is that the greatest way for me to create purpose for myself was to start by doing things that I love. Nothing feels better then waking up in the morning and having something that I enjoy be top of mind and having the ability to go do it and create fulfillment from it. I can tell you right now, this business that I run, the YouTube channel and coaching men, isn't what I started as. I was an army guy. I worked over a decade after getting out of the military in a boring desk job working for the government. Miserable. And it affected who I was as a man, my mental health, my relationships, ultimately losing my kids and going through a divorce because of the depression that was created from that environment. Now, I've pursued my purpose as a man, going through the four steps that I just gave you, and I am happier than I've ever been. The next piece of advice that I wish my father had given me is get your life together first. Find your purpose. We already went through that. Create a living for yourself. Create stability for yourself. Travel the world. Enjoy your life. And then when you've come to a place where you've developed a skill, created your purpose, built a business or a career, and became a man of significance, then you can think about settling down, putting your roots in, having a family. Most men, including myself, we put the cart before the horse. We chase the woman, have a kid. We don't know who we are, what we want. We haven't created purpose. We don't understand what fulfills us. We don't know who we want to be as men. We have no idea what we want. 
And now what we've done is not only have we brought a woman into that who's seeking our leadership, but we're also bringing a child. And so what happens? You find yourself in a place where you're trying to build the plane while you fly it. This is why most modern marriages end in divorce. It's not just because there's a misalignment in values and inability to communicate, and unmet expectations. It's also because when couples get married in their early 20s, not only do they lack the knowledge and the skills necessary to truly step forth in life with a purpose, but we skip the part that comes with making sure values align vetting the families, courting the woman, and going through this process of making sure that the person that you choose to partner with is a good fit. Instead, we go right into bump uglies, have a kid, oh shit, we gotta get married. Now I've gotta go figure out a way to provide for this family. I'm not acting in my purpose, I'm acting based upon a mindset of scarcity where I do what I have to do so that I can survive as a dad and a man. And it creates an incredible amount of instability and unpredictable nature in the home. It affects the children. It affects the wife. It affects the relationship. Brother, the last thing that you need to be worried about when you bring a woman into your life is how you're going to support yourself, her, and your potential children. Now, the other piece that's so super important, and again, more advice that I wish my father had given me, is... Once you've developed as a man and you've built skills and you've become a man of value, who's respectable, who other men want to be, you're honorable, you've created a relationship of integrity with yourself, your status increases. And the higher your status, the better the woman you will attract. She will come to you. If you find yourself in a place where you're pursuing women, most times what's going to happen is you're going to have to compromise your values for a lower quality woman because you're operating from a place of scarcity. If you instead focus on operating from a place of abundance, knowing that you don't need a woman and you can pick and choose the one that you want, now you're in this place where they have to qualify themselves to you. You're the catch. I can tell you one thing for certain. There's no shortage of beautiful beautiful women in the world go on to any social media channel and there's also no shortage of beautiful women seeking attention and the unfortunate part about the world that we live in today is the fact that there's also no shortage of men who are willing to freely give them that attention my brother your attention is the most valuable thing that you have and if you choose to freely give it away to women pandering for your attention the only thing that you're doing is perpetuating the problem you are not going to attract the high quality, high value woman if you're feeding into their childish gimmicks of seeking attention. If you truly want to be a man of value, you need to understand that your attention isn't something that you just freely give. The people in your life have to earn it and they need to prove that their presence in your life creates value for you. They're not time sucks. They're not energy vampires. They're not the type of people who are going to ask you to compromise your values or your purpose to accommodate their presence in your life. They're going to be the type of people who want to be part of your life by adding value to it, elevating you. And they're thankful that you are willing to give part of yourself to them. Those women exist. Those friends exist. The problem is most people don't realize that attention is the most valuable thing that they have. Therefore, they give it away freely. And so instead of raising the value of the attention of a man based upon his value, what he chooses to do is participate in the race to the bottom. Don't give your attention freely. The next very important piece of advice that I wish I would have gotten from my father is find a mentor. If you go back in history, trade craft, medieval times, and even further, the concept of our last name, our surname, came from what? Our family name. And our family name was what? What our family did. The nature of the relationship between boys and men and their fathers growing up meant that I was going to go into the family business, whatever that was, and learn a skill, a trade from my father. The last name Carpenter is a good example. John Carpenter. What do you think his ancestors did? Your surname was simply 
what you did. Now, not always the case. I'm not necessarily gonna follow the pathway of my father and we already talked about why. So what happens? We have young men who don't have mentors to teach them a skill. Find out what it is that you wanna pursue, your purpose, and then go find a man who's a decade ahead of you. Nowadays, you can pay that guy and he's gonna teach you the skill. Maybe you're lucky and you meet him and he's willing to help. Whatever the situation is, it's imperative that we as men not only find a mentor, but we find a tribe of men who share the same values, desires, and direction that they wanna go in life. You need to have a tribe. You need to associate yourself with other men who share the same view on personal growth and development and becoming better men. You are not cool being a fucking lone wolf. You're not. I don't care how you say it and people brag about this idea of I'm a lone wolf. I'm a sigma. You're not cool. What you are is you're stupid. And here's why. If I have five friends who all have the same values, who have the same desires in life and are pursuing the same direction, and one of those five friends comes across a problem in his life, and what he does is he goes back to his brothers, his tribe, his friends and says, Hey, this is the problem I have. What do you think the chances are that one of these other men have been through that? Even if they haven't, now you have not just one person who can work on this problem, but you have five or 10 or however many. Do you think it's going to take more or less time to solve that problem? If you decide that you want to be a lone wolf and figure it out on your own, I don't need anybody. What you're doing is you're passing up on the opportunity to learn from the mistakes and the lessons of other men who are on the same journey, which is only doing one thing. It's prolonging your growth. Set your ego aside and be willing to admit that you are not the expert. You're not the best. There is somebody out there who's done this before you. And even if there isn't, five brains working on a problem is much greater than one. You need a tribe. You need a mentor. And when you find that, you'll find that it's much easier to stay focused on your goals and live in your purpose as a man without distractions because you've surrounded yourself with people who are gonna hold you accountable to the commitments that you make to yourself. Part of the reason why so many men struggle with staying on track with something as simple as being healthy is the fact that they don't have any mechanisms for accountability built into their life. They don't have a tribe. They don't have a community. They don't have a brotherhood. They don't have a mentor. They live on their own. They're lone wolves. And now they're really fat lone wolves because they're too stubborn and egotistical to be willing to accept the fact that the way that they're doing things isn't the right way. You need to network. You need to develop a community and you need to find a mentor. The next piece of advice that I wish my father had taught me is the way you show up matters. Right now, I look like shit. My beard is grown out. You can see it's not trimmed. I have an appointment with my barber tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. I typically go once a week. I get my head shaved. I'm not bald. I call it BBC, bald by choice. I choose to be bald because it's easier for me. I'd rather be bald and not have to worry about brushing my hair and worrying about styling it. And I think it looks pretty good, especially for the look I have. I kind of just own it. I keep the beard. Typically what I'll do is I'll have them line it up or I'll shave it and we'll fix the mustache. I make that effort to groom myself. My nails are clipped. My clothes are clean. I wear cologne. I dress with nice form fitting clothes. When I leave my house, I don't look like shit. I take pride in my appearance. I stay fit. I stay active. I care about this because I know for a fact that since you've been watching this video, you can't help but tell that my traps are just, this guy works out. This guy takes care of himself. You can tell that this guy has invested a lot of time into his body. What does that say? It says that I'm committed. I can fulfill the commitments that I make. I'm disciplined. I'm consistent. Those are things that we value in men. I care about how I look. I show up the best version of myself that I can be in everything that I do. Now, I want you to take that and go to the other end of the spectrum. When you show up and you're unkempt, your clothes are messy, 
you didn't comb your hair, your beard is scruffy, you're not well-groomed, your fingernails aren't clipped, you don't smell good, you stink like body odor, you're overweight, your fucking stomach's hanging over your belly, you can't see your dick, you talk about you're not motivated. What do you think people see? What do you think your kids see? What do you think your wife sees? Is that the type of man that you'd want to follow? Or do you want to follow the type of man who not only fulfills all of his obligations to lead and provide and protect and be virtuous and live in integrity and take care of shit, but also makes the time to take care of himself and invests into his body and invests into his appearance and gives a shit? What is the difference between those two men? Which one will you respect more? I wish my father would have taught me the importance of something as simple as wearing tailored clothes, buying cologne, and making sure that I groom myself and my cuticles and my fingernails are taken care of. Making sure that I trim my facial hair so that I look presentable. If you guys go back to me five, six years ago on this channel, big, huge, scruffy, sloppy beard, right? Now, I've stepped into a place as a man where I'm taking pride in the way that I show up and how I look. It's important. How you show up in one thing is how you show up in everything. And if I give maximum effort in something as simple as making sure my teeth are white, how do you think that spills over and reflects into everything else I do? I'm in sales. If I get onto that call and I look like shit, how do you think that's going to impact my ability to close those deals and bring in more clients? You need to think about these things. Your wife should be proud of the man that she walks around with. You should be proud of the man that you see looking at you in the mirror. Your kids should be proud of their dad. There should be no embarrassment or shame that comes with this. You need to take care of yourself. The next piece of advice that I wish my father had given me is, number one, learn to fight. And number two, do hard shit. Why do I need to learn how to fight? Well, because my primary job as a man is to be able to protect. Your woman wants to be married to a fucking monster. She sleeps much better at night knowing that there's a monster in her bed who's capable and willing to destroy any threat that comes into that home uninvited. One of the most honorable things about a man is his ability to maintain self-control and temperance over his emotions, not become angry, fighting, getting physical for no reason, right? We talk about violence not being the answer. Well, that's not always the case. And I'm just going to go ahead and say it. And Jordan Peterson said it best, but if you're not capable of violence, your ability to restrain yourself from violence is not a virtue. You're a pussy. The, you need to be the type of man who's a fucking savage and has that under voluntary control. What does that mean? You need to be strong. You need to practice martial arts. If you haven't done martial arts before, I suggest you need to learn a form of striking and you need to learn a form of wrestling or jujitsu. The best foundation that you can get for mixed martial arts and fighting is wrestling, period. This is not a debate. Wrestling is the best foundation. Then boxing or even better kickboxing or Muay Thai. If you learn one of those two and then you also learn wrestling and or jujitsu, you can completely incapacitate 99.9% .9 of the population with those skills. You need to be proficient and trained consistently in martial arts, period. This is a perishable skill. And also because we live in a world where guns are a thing and most criminals are betas and they're fucking cowards, you also need to make sure that you're consistently training on how to use your firearm. You need to have a concealed carry permit and you need to put yourself in a position where very simple, you can never be a victim. Because hope is not a strategy for protecting your family. You need to be deadly. This is not negotiable. This is why we stay fit. This is why we stay healthy. This is why we go to the gym and do our cardio and lift weights is because we want to be strong, competent, capable leaders who are effective at violence. Now, does that mean that you walk around with your ego and your chest out and you seek out altercations? No. Typically, the man who says the least in a room is the most dangerous. Be that man.
Now, going into the second part of this, one of the things that martial arts teaches men, and even at a young age, I have a son who's in jujitsu, is mental toughness. You're going to go through a point in your life where you're going to want to fucking quit. Whatever it is that you're doing, you're going to want to quit. You're going to want to give up. You're going to walk away. It's going to be too hard. You're going to fail. You're going to become frustrated. You're going to be emotional. And quite frankly, you're going to need a tampon. I get it. We've all been there. What separates the good men from the great men? It's the men who are resilient enough to push through despite their failures, despite how they feel, despite their fears. They continue to drive forward regardless, no matter how hard it is, no matter how painful it is. They're living in such a deep degree of conviction and integrity in who they are as men that they're not going to let something as simple as their feelings detract them from fulfilling their purpose and their potential as men. You need to develop mental toughness. You need to develop resilience. And the only way to do that is by doing things that are hard, that are painful. You have to walk through the fire. Most people avoid that. As a man, you have to pursue it. You have to find it, create it. The next piece of advice that I wish my father had given me goes along with the one earlier, which was find a mentor, is continuously read, educate yourself. You don't have to pay for a fancy degree and go to college and go through this process of indoctrination in order to be an educated, well-versed man. Read. There's centuries worth of knowledge waiting at your fingertips. You have a phone. Download Audible. Commit to one book a month. Whatever it is. Listen to self-improvement, self-development, whatever type of books interest you on your commute continuously learn. Most people don't read a book after they graduate high school and then they wonder why they never progress. Books are your ability to gain knowledge discovered through time. You want to skip the line and not have to reinvent the wheel on becoming the man or creating the life that you want to create? Read. I promise you there's a book out there about what you want to do, what you want to be, where you want to go and how to do it. Become a student and continue to be a student for the rest of your life. And when you do that, you're going to be more interesting. You're going to be more intelligent. You're going to be more eloquent. You're going to be more capable. You're going to have a broader spectrum. You're going to be able to conduct critical thinking. This is what a good man needs to be able to do. He should be able to draw from as many pieces of information possible so that he can make the best decision for himself and his family at any given time based upon all of the information that's available. And if you're not continuing to educate yourself, you are failing. You're selling yourself short on the opportunity that you have to become the best version of yourself. The last piece of advice that I have that I wish my father would have given me is be okay being different. Own your shit, whatever it is, who you are, what you want, the life that you want to create, who you want to be with. Stand in integrity with yourself and understand that no man ever became great by following the fucking crowd. Does that mean you have to walk away looking down your nose at everybody else because you've decided to take the road less traveled? No. Your job is to lead from a place of humility. And the only way that you're going to create that pathway for other people so that you can teach them and elevate other men is by forging that path from a place of, I'm going to try to find a better way. Not so that I can be better than everybody else and live in this place of ego, but so that you can help the people behind you. Ego is your enemy. Arrogance is your enemy. We are all human. We all have our flaws, our failures, our insecurities, and our self-doubts. The measure of a man is not those things. It's his ability to face those things. And despite those traumas and hardships and challenges in his life, continue to be the man that he knows he's called to be. You're not beholden to anyone. You don't owe anyone anything. Live a genuine, authentic life as the man that you want to be. And understand that, that path is not going to be easy, but it will be the most rewarding. So anyway, I could keep going with these, but I think the list that I've given you, despite not being all inclusive, is a phenomenal start to get most men out of the rut that they're in and hopefully give most young men a direction to start traveling if they're not sure where they should go. 
So if you're a man and you're feeling lost and you're struggling with understanding why you're here and what you should be doing, hopefully this was valuable for you. And if you feel like any of the information I shared here tonight would be valuable for someone you know, please send it to them. My name is Josh Holyfield. This is the Josh Holyfield podcast. I've made the commitment to do these videos for you daily. So if you have any questions, topic ideas, or insight that you'd like me to provide, drop them in the comments and I'll see you tomorrow. Stay vigilant.